Welcome back. Since 1968, Ostos Community College has served as an educational agent for change, transformation, and improving the quality of life in the South Bronx and neighboring communities. And that has not stopped throughout the pandemic. Joining us now to share how things have been at Ostos these past few months is President Daisy Coco de Filipes. She's the interim president at Ostos CUNY. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Today. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Lopez. Of course. Uh, very nice to be with all of you. Nice being with you. I am uh, a new interim president, but I am not new to Ostos, I'm not new to CUNY. I'm an immigrant educated by CUNY completely, all my degrees, from my bachelor's to my PhD, uh, are CUNY degrees. And I was at Ostos from January 2002 till July 2008 when I assumed the presidency of Nagata Valley Community College in Connecticut, where I served for 12 years. I came back because I love Ostos, because I am so proud that CUNY has a Latino chancellor. I want to be part of that. Uh, as it turns out, there's also a pandemic, so I also want to be part of the effort to continue to move through education, a community I love. Thank you so much for sharing your familiar face in the Ostos community and the students, the staff, everyone appreciates the work that you've done over the years in the community. Um, can you just tell us about how campus life, life has changed at Ostos during the pandemic for both staff and students? How has the college prepared for this fall semester? Well, 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 I have to tell you, there was a lot of good work that was done by my predecessor, uh, President Gomez, who retired. Uh, um, and um, in terms of getting the faculty and staff ready for an, an online environment, I think we have a, 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 vice, a senior vice president for administration who has been with the college for over 20 years, known as one of the most effective. So there's a lot of work about keeping the college safe clean and, uh, and uh, a lot of generosity. So right now we are about 96% of our classes this fall and for the spring as well. About that uh, online, there are different versions of that. Some of that is what they call online synchronous, which is you meet online, but you have a set schedule and then you have a synchronous. Uh, the Okay, so the college offers uh, over a thousand classes, day, night, synchronous, but also asynchronous to deal with the give flexibility to those uh, uh, working parents and, and so on. Uh, we do have on the ground that 4% of our classes where a lot of social distancing and every precaution is taken, and that is to support uh, a lie health sciences courses and the science labs. Uh, so what has happened? So I come and I said, okay, there's some things I need to do because my, my usual way is to walk around and hug people and talk to people. That can't happen, right? <laughs> so we created a number of things. First of all, we, the college is going through the process of writing the self-study uh, for the accreditation for the 10th year. And so there's a lot of people involved in that and keeping that structure moving forward was really important and, and communication was key to that. So three weeks into my tenure, I created a, an Ostos Weekly online, a Sevanario Ostosiano. I write a letter, I put a poem, we celebrate everybody uh, in that poem. And then I have different departments and even our student government president Mr. Apache, he writes his own column in there every week just to keep everybody connected and communication, you know, is really important. The food pantry uh, extended his hours Monday to Friday, and then also by appointment and also uh, gift cards. Uh, there were the administration organized to distribute uh, many of the devices that the students need. Um, so that happened. Then I created this Ostos Culture Talks, Veladas Ostosianas. We're ready, we're working into the fourth one. We just had the borough president on Friday 
to celebrate Puerto Rican Heritage Month. Um, so that that is happening as well. And then to stay close to community, we created the OSAS Community College Community Advisory Council, and we send a lot of letters. I do write a lot of letters and reach out to people. So I was hoping for about 30 folks to agree to join that advisory council. And it's in education, in the arts, small businesses, uh, 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 healthcare, you know, all of that. Okay, so the first meeting took place about the end, the end, the last week of October. So a few, two, three weeks ago, and 61 people came. Since then, and because I continue to meet people like now, at, at, at three o'clock I'm meeting another group, uh, uh, multiple Zoom. The thing about Zoom is that in a, in a sense, it's not as warm and, and personal, but it connects you to people everywhere. Yes, the work has obviously not stopped as we said in the beginning. Um, and I actually wanted to elaborate, um, President Coco de Filipis. Um, you mentioned uh, the food insecurity in the, in the community and you know how the food pantry uh, was established and is still going on Monday through Friday by appointment. Can we also talk about the lack of tech equity in the Bronx and um, many students in the, in the community are faced with you know, lack of access to digital devices. I that's an ongoing conversation right now, but before I even got here, I was invited by Congressman Adriano Spaya to be part of a community group that was gonna be looking at some health issues and doctors and in the community. And so they put me in the Committee on Education and Technology. And my big concern has always been now is technology added to it but forever since i was a young faculty and you know with a lot of fire going out there all right i would talk to the parents and say take a look at what happens in fourth grade if they don't if they don't click in math in the fourth grade if they don't get they're not up to speed with her with their reading comprehension and writing but the math because so much of the future in technical careers and sciences right and and so Look at that, and the other, my other pet peeve was, if they're in eighth and ninth grade, are they taking algebra? All right, so you add to that, and in fact, when I was here at the provost, we got a small NSF grant, and some of my wonderful faculty in math were working with parents, just to work with parents to help them uh, understand the homework so that they can help their kids with their math homework because some of our the members of our communities, they're, they're working and they're working and they are not, uh, you know, they're, they're intimidated a little bit with some of this work and so on. So imagine now, can you imagine now this digital divide? Yeah, if you have a device and even if you have some of the Wi-Fi, right? What happens in a house with three kids? Mm -hmm. And if the parents are working home, they're using the device. How many devices can they use? How many can they afford? They can't. How do they get the work done? And so part of what's, is, uh, what is happening is that there's a group of some very talented young people. I won't mention names here because I don't want to drop names. I figure let them talk about it themselves. But a lot of very talented young people running some of these not-for-profits here in the Bronx. Uh, you know, be participated in that committee as well. And now these, then they went to talk to the borough president. So now they're talking about a kind of a bigger thing uh, where we all try to advocate to create Wi-Fi communities in a sense. Uh, and so that's all in development and it's very preliminary and it's not Daisy's creation, it's the creation of a, of a, of a, of a committee that was put together by Congressman Espaillat. But I think there's, there's interest and I think there's some of these younger folks who run the not-for-profits, the college certainly is looking to find a way to participate in that in that process as well. Absolutely, the tech equity and the uh, digital divide in our communities is definitely right. one of those social, right. uh, you know, the social, uh, the impact that we have all faced in, in the borough. And I, we were there, Bronx was there at the Tech Equity Day of Action with the borough president and a couple of those leaders that you didn't want to name drop. So 
we're definitely no. have our, our fingers on the pulse there. Um, I wanted to talk about um, something else. I wanted to talk about the arts and culture at Hostels. The cultural center is one of the most lively, exciting cultural centers in the entire borough. Can you tell us about leveraging the virtual space for events? Oh my goodness, and how, and how, and how, and how. Since September 25th till now, 29 virtual events. Wow, wow, wow. Driving, all right? And I think it, it, the, the, the season closes December 11th. Coming up in November, I'm trying to, I'm going to give you the right date. Uh, they are going to have a Kuwansa celebration that's going to be taped, that they will use for the first time the main stage to, 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 to taper from. So there's, there are ways, the thing is that they tell me, there's an, there was an exhibit that they, encourage all these, all these painters on the other side of the Hudson or whatever, because it is virtual. People, you keep streaming it and they keep seeing it. And, and so you have more than one um, way to, to reach your audience. It's, 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 it's more, there are more opportunities. Like I said to you, there are deficits because I remember being here and I remember being at the uh, at the uh, uh, at the, uh, the what is it the the Oscars, the main stage there right the, yeah. uh, and getting up and dancing in the aisle in my younger day when there was some very nice Cuban music being played Are you kidding so, <laughs> so you can't replace that but what you can do and uh, what they what the college has done really well and it will continue to work on is the advantages of virtual communication reaching audiences outside of the United States, they tell me as well. And so this, this that's, you know, I'm from the half full, glass half full kind of school. <laughs> so I looked at that and I said, somehow we're having an impact. Yeah. And somehow the arts and music that are so much a part of keeping a community alive and for those who are tuning into the interview, you can find out about some of those events on Hostos website, hostos.cuny.edu. There are a lot of things happening. Um, as the interim president stated, we have Shifting Streams, the virtual exhibit. They came on the show as well to talk about it. And it's all amazing, all amazing events. Before we go, um, can we also talk about, uh, you mentioned it earlier, you are the founder of the Dominican Studies Association. And later on in the show, we're going to talk about Professor um, Nelson Santana and Evelyn fernandez Ketchum about the event. But can you please just share a little bit about the upcoming event really quickly to invite our viewers? We're running. Well, let me just say to you that it is about how do you know, part of it is dealing with the pandemic, part of it is uh, at an international level, part of it is the importance of culture, of ethnicity, and in this case, of this, this urgency, mm -hmm. Dominican studies for people to know. Folks, I mean, you, you never, you never ethnic and equity and social sensitivity have never been more on the score than now. Let me just say that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing um, all of this information and giving us an update on Ostos Community College. Uh, president, interim President Daisy Coco de Felicia. Could I just add one last thing here? May I? Oh, yes. Abuelitas and parents, get your kids to register for school for the spring if they're not registered. Yes. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> it is on our website. There's a lot of information, wonderful opportunities, and they need to be in school. Thank you. They really so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'll give them that website right here, right now. You can visit hostels.cuny.edu for more information. Also follow them on social media at Hostels College for updates. And if you're a student at Hostels, the Hostels Food Pantry takes place by appointment only Monday through Friday. And to schedule that appointment, you can contact Madeline Cruz at 718-518-4141 or email mcruz at hostels.cuny.edu. We'll be right back. <laughs> 